Repairs, Prep and Coating, Flat Modified Bitumen Roof. The flat modified bitumen portion of the roof to be coated measures 22,000 square feet. Prior to repairing and throughout the coating process, proper safety precautions such as a safety monitor, warning line systems, and other fall protection systems should be established where appropriate and according to OSHA guidelines and regulations. The first step in the coating process is to clean the roof using a power sweeper. Typically, one person operates the sweeper machine while two additional workers walk slightly in front of the unit with backpack blowers, which are used to blow dirt and loose granules from the cap sheet that were dislodged by the sweeper. In certain instances, roofs will have many areas where the cap sheet is delaminated from the baseboard. These areas appear like blisters. In order to repair and prepare the void areas for coating, they need to be filled with a rubberized membrane material, which comes in three grades. First is a thin spray grade, which is co-sprayed with an accelerator and allows heavy film build that sets up in just minutes. The co-spray operation is performed with a specially designed spray unit. Second is a slightly thickened grade for prep work, which can be brushed, rolled, or sprayed with a typical airless sprayer, yielding moderate film build. And third is a thickened grade, which can yield good film build using a trowel, brush, roller, or it can be sprayed with a typical airless sprayer. This is an all-purpose grade that can be used for both prep work and as a final coat. Cuts are made in the delaminated cap sheet areas with a utility knife and the trowel spray grade is sprayed into the delaminated area. The viscosity of the trowel spray grade is ideal because it is thick enough to get good film build without being too thick to be able to spray. The cap sheet over the cuts is then pressed back down and additional trowel spray grade is sprayed over the cut. A piece of reinforcing fabric is embedded over the cut and a final layer of trowel spray grade is sprayed and brushed in over the fabric. Prep work begins with the application of the trowel spray grade in 90 degree angles around equipment such as vent pipes. Two methods for applying the trowel spray grade are outlined in the following examples. In the first example, the trowel spray grade is sprayed around the base of one vent pipe followed by the application of reinforcing fabric in which sections are cut to length and applied over the trowel spray grade. Relief cuts are made in these sections so they can fit flush around the base. After the fabric sections are embedded around the base of the vent pipe, a final layer of trowel spray grade is applied and brushed in over the fabric. In the second example, another vent pipe, the trowel spray grade is brushed on around the base as opposed to being sprayed, followed by the application of reinforcing fabric in which sections are cut to length and applied over the trowel spray grade. Relief cuts are made in these sections so they can fit flush around the base. After the fabric sections are embedded around the base of the vent pipe, a final layer of trowel spray grade is applied and brushed in over the fabric. Similar steps are followed during the prep work around the AC units. A coat of trowel spray grade is sprayed along the exterior side of the base supports of the unit. This is followed by the application of reinforcing fabric, cut to length, and embedded around the base supports. A final layer of trowel spray grade is sprayed and brushed in over the fabric. Beneath the AC units, a heavy coat of trowel spray grade is sprayed in along the interior side of the base supports of the unit. When working underneath AC units, it is hard for a worker to see and reach these areas by hand. The fact that the trowel spray grade can be sprayed underneath these areas makes the prep work better and faster. The last of the prep work to be done on this roof is coating the inside of the gutters that run between the flat, modified bitumen portion of the roof being coated and an adjacent metal roof. In this instance, the gutter is approximately 6 inches wide and 6 inches deep. The trowel spray grade is poured in a heavy bead into the gutter and the bead is then rolled out on all interior sides of the gutter. With all of the prep work completed, 
The next step in the process of coating the flat, modified bitumen roof is to co-spray the rubberized membrane along with the accelerator, which is sometimes called the catalyst, to get a monolithic, seamless, heavy film of rubberized emulsion over the entire roof. In this process, one person typically operates the spray gun while another person walks the hoses to stay clear of the area being sprayed. Another person is usually on the ground with a spray unit monitoring and switching out drums of rubberized emulsion and catalyst. The spray gun is kept approximately 12 inches from the surface being sprayed and a sweeping pattern is approximately 60 inches wide, putting down approximately 80 wet meals and yielding approximately 60 dry mills. The crew works together, walking the spray pattern backwards in lanes. Pay attention to the wind direction in order to determine where to start the lanes to be sprayed. The catalyst comes out of the left side of the gun. In this particular instance, the wind direction is left to right. You want to let the wind push the catalyst stream into the emulsion stream. The design of the spray equipment is simple. The spray unit sits on a small sled with wheels that can easily be transported in the bed of a pickup truck to the job site. The unit consists of a gasoline engine that powers a drive shaft, which turns two diaphragm pumps. The larger diaphragm pump sprays the rubberized emulsion, and the smaller diaphragm pump sprays the catalyst. Both of these pumps are agricultural diaphragm pumps and can be easily sourced at an agricultural supply store if replacement is ever necessary. With a gasoline engine, you won't need to bring a separate air compressor to power the pumps. On the back side of the spray unit, you see two sets of hoses for both pumps. This allows for both pumps to operate in a recirculating mode while they are not engaged. The blue hose is for the emulsion pump and the red hose is for the catalyst pump. The total length of these hoses is approximately 200 feet, which allows for the unit to sit on the ground while the hoses are pulled up onto the roof. When co-spraying, it is important to achieve the proper ratio of rubberized emulsion to catalyst in order to get good coalescence of the cured film. You're looking to achieve a balance between a tight, impermeable film and a rapid cure. The proper ratio is achieved through pressure and volume. The emulsion pump pressure is higher than the catalyst pump pressure. Pump pressure is dialed in and when the lever is pushed down, the pump is engaged. The spray gun has two wands. One for the emulsion and the other is for the catalyst. The spray tip for the emulsion is larger than the spray tip for the catalyst. To prepare the catalyst, start by filling a drum with 45 gallons of water, which is 375 pounds net weight. Mount a mixing motor on the side of the drum. Turn on and increase the speed of the motor to the point where a vortex develops. Add 25 pounds of calcium chloride to the water. The water will be quite cloudy as the calcium chloride dissolves. Mix for approximately three minutes or until the cloudiness disappears. The monolithic, seamless, heavy film of rubberized emulsion, after a couple of days of curing, is top coated with a white reflective coating. The white top coat is applied with an airless sprayer. The wet mills to be applied depend on the volume solids of the white top coat being applied. The repairs, prep work, and coating of this modified bitumen roof with the rubberized emulsion and white reflective coating will sustain life of the existing roofing system for many years to come.